So, uh, thanks for, for spending the, the time with us. I know you, you scheduled the day at the, the point of your own event is, is a busy one. Um, would you mind just sort of telling us uh, a little bit about yourself, you know, your background, how you got involved in cryptocurrency and figure? Okay, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's a good way to introduce it. Introduce myself and the company start a conversation. Uh, so I'm Gracie Chen, Managing Director of Biget. What I do at the firm is to look at expansion, marketing, branding, PR side of, side of the business. Uh, and I'm also here to uh, louder our voice and make the brain further flourish. So how I get into crypto is that when I actually studied applied mathematics back in my university in Singapore, National University of Singapore, uh, and after graduation, I was a TV anchor uh, reporting on finance and technology. So that's when I met a few friends. Uh, for example, Binance, uh, co-founder of E. We were both in Beijing at the time. And then uh, Tim Draper, who is the founder of DMG and Draper University. Uh, these are some of the people who introduced me to crypto. That they were talking about uh, you know, how interesting Bitcoin was uh, and is. Uh, what what's happening? What's sticking? And at that time, also like Ethereum, just like barely come up. Uh, XRP was very popular as well. So these are the three cryptocurrencies I bought in 2014, 15. XRP, ETC, ETH. In smaller amount, and I really regret that. <laughs> I should have invested much more. Uh, but then uh, I was just doing my business as usual in one two startups, uh, from a. Uh, so I started, uh, I co-founded two firms in Web2 space, one doing FinTech, one doing Metaverse. On the side, I also do lots of investment in crypto space. So uh, buy, buy some cryptocurrency on secondary market, do some primary market investment as well. Uh, one of the investments that I, I did was uh, BigKeep. So BigKeep is our, it's Biget's decentralized wallet that we actually co-operate with. Uh, so Biget's founder was asking whether the asking to the investors whether they know someone who has a marketing background and they were looking for uh, a partner to join the firm. And I kind of just volunteered myself. I said, oh, it sounds sound like me, right? The profile matches. I, I know crypto, um, I've been in the space, although not really working full time, but I know lots of people uh, did some investment and have marketing background. Uh, so that's how I joined the firm. That's wonderful. And um, I guess some of that community might not know what BitGet is, but would you mind giving a, a, a detailed description of what BitGet is uh, for anybody who perhaps doesn't already know? So yeah, BitGet is a crypto centralized exchange uh, established in 2018. Actually, it's been, we're, we're celebrating our fifth year anniversary uh, this summer. And uh, what BitGet is especially famous for are two products. One is derivative trading, one is copy trading. So, Copy trading is our flagship product where people can copy and mimic other elite, elite traders' uh, uh, kind of portfolio and trading strategy and uh, hopefully gain from it. So, copy trading is uh, what we had established, I think, three years ago. And uh, after that, lots of other exchanges are also learning from us and copying uh, the same kind of product to their platform. Um, so far, Biget has served more than 8 million users from more than 100 countries uh, scattered around the world. But we started off in, in 2018. So um, I think what like, people may also ask, there are so many exchanges, how are you different, differentiate, right? What, why should we go to uh, Biget? I would say um, in terms of differentiation factor, uh, we value a lot on three things. Number one, um, transparency and uh, protection. So we spent some time downstairs uh, during our panel talking about our reserve published, our protection fund established even before FTX and then increased after FTX so that people have this kind of uh, protection scheme uh, and we just don't trust in the space. Um, and then another thing that sets us apart, I would say, is uh, public trading and uh, how good this product is terms of onboarding new users because you know as we, we've all been to that stage right like a few years ago when we were just new to the space there's so many things to learn there, there are like new words popping up every day what is main point what is brc20 right now but at that time also similarly like many people 
So they, they need some time to get into the space and really do your own research. Uh, but copy trading is a great platform where you can just learn from the more experienced traders uh, rather than you know, doing every research from yourself. You can look at their portfolio also, like in terms of what are some of the coins that they, they, they have uh, in their portfolio, and you can start uh, researching from there, even if you don't, you know, uh, there are so many tokens to choose. You can have a list of things that you need to learn with, things like that, and then you can uh, mimic their strategy and uh, gain out of it. So, copy trading is a very interesting product that set us apart from other exchanges because until today, we are the number one in trading volume on copy trading, even bigger than some other you know, bigger exchanges. Um, the third one, I'm thinking. Uh, maybe I would say brand. Uh, what I mean by that is there we, we've been working with Messi and uh, uh, that that partnership and sponsorship started before the World Cup. So I'm very glad that he won the champion. He and his Argentina team uh, won the championship in uh, the World Cup. Uh, but not just Messi, but also uh, all sorts of you know ecosystem and the brand awareness that we are driving. And by the way, ecosystem. Uh, let me add it as the fourth point because uh, we, we do have a very strong ecosystem establishment in crypto. We have a centralized exchange, we get, but we also have a decentralized wallet like we keep. And then we have an investment arm, uh, a news platform, an information platform. So this is how our whole ecosystem looks like. Why do we do this? Because we think it's important. And right now in 2023, the competitions among exchanges shouldn't be just around DAU or trading model, etc. It should be a lot on ecosystem and how we kind of each leverage on each other and uh, build the whole group together rather than just an exchange. So I guess that's another thing that set us apart from some other small exchanges. And uh, you, you touched on FTX. I mean, what the thoughts of that, that was, you know, a lot of people lost a substantial amount of money, their crypto assets, and uh, obviously that's raised lots of concerns around exchanges. What is um, Bitget doing to sort of, I guess, mitigate some of the, the, the risks and concerns to sort of like your everyday investor after everything that happened with FTX? That's a good question, and we also ask ourselves a lot. Uh, so we think Custodia is one important factor where right now people are more comfortable putting their money on you know, decentralized wallet or their own, even like hard, hardware wallet or even just write it on the, on the paper, you know, kind of uh, store, storing the, the password, uh, sorry, the, the, the password. Uh, but I think Custodia is one important thing that we, uh, we also implemented. Uh, we work with uh, a third party custodian firm so that uh, people are more comfortable with putting the money on their platform rather than on our platform because we are still trading the platform. Uh, and then for FTX, I guess some, 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 something that we really learned from that is um, you probably have, uh, if you study a bit more on FTX and Alameda, you know it's not an issue with FTX because FTX as a Exchange itself, they actually have pretty good, healthy financial flow, uh, inflow and outflow. But the main thing is about commingling users found and then how Alameda research is leveraging and uh, you know, uh, with, I would say, greed, like being too greedy and uh, leveraging too much where they shouldn't be. That's important. And we also communicate a lot with our investment arm. Uh, first of all, we don't commingle users' fund, so they have their own separate fund, which is a 400 million AUM as an under management fund uh, that they want to invest in. But how we did investment and how Alameda research did investment was totally different. They were like a lot of um, leverage, uh, leveraged buys and sells, but we do fundamentally like primary market VCs and then secondary market. Know, maybe some high frequency trading strategy, some uh, uh, secondary market other strategies, as well as like NFT investment, etc. So it's totally two different ways of investment. And we go from you know, 
of how uh, FTS and Anamega like, were scored up. Uh, and I think that's another thing that we've been thinking about. Uh, right now, we also find it very hard to build trust, and we spend a lot of resources, a lot of time within our higher managers discussing you know, how to build trust, how to be the professional. Uh, platform as well as you know your maybe your go-to financial advisor in crypto uh, by providing some research and uh, some more uh, financial uh, kind of service to, to the whole industry. Yeah, these are the things that we really focus on. Yeah, I think interviews like this is fantastic because you get to actually see the, the, the people behind the, the brand, and I think that, that that's that's amazing. And, uh, I think the community really do appreciate that. And uh, one, one of the other questions I've got, artificial intelligence is, is a real big buzzword at the moment. And there's uh, lots of buzz around artificial intelligence. And uh, I read an article that BitGet have been using artificial intelligence in the background. Would you mind sort of touching on you know, what you've, you've been uh, utilizing AI for in the background and what you've kind of found from, from using it. Yeah, um, yes. So since ChatGPT last year, we started thinking about how to utilize AI more on our platform. There are a few areas that we identified. For example, uh, using ChatGPT as a customer service tool to you know, just uh, uh, be more efficient and uh, have a higher turn on, turnaround time and uh, uh, give you know, all the feedback slightly faster. So that's one area. And then some other similar concept area in terms of automation is also around um, like we, we have a big translation team. So I know the translation team is also implementing just like when we, we, we as individually, like when you are doing translation, you use like Google Translate or I use DeepL, that's another uh, translation platform, AI translation platform. We, we've been doing that on a company level as well. Uh, but these are the automation part. Um, and then there are some other things like trading strategy, which can also be implemented in AI. Uh, AI on-chain data is a big sector that we are investing in on our investment arm. Uh, we also just incubated a AI web free social web project, which is providing a virtual boyfriend for the ladies in web free space. Yeah, so it's a uh, it's a very interesting social five project at the startup in the early stage uh, that we work with. So these are some interesting like different sectors. For the exchange, I guess the, the two major issues are the first two. So uh, in terms of you know chat GPT customer service, that's again uh, that article mainly about. Actually we, we do find it uh, very interesting and uh, much more common these days to implement AI in customer service, but we also find some issues. So for example, if you ask ChatGPT, uh, tell me 30 coins that you would recommend to buy, given I'm very risk averse, I want to find the, the, the best uh, and the, the most uh, trusting kind of token in the space. What they list out will include Luna, UST, um, Terra, so why is that? Because you know, data in, data out, and the chat GPT data only updated until in September 21. Um, and that's before the lunar collapse. So that's one good example in terms of uh, the risks involved when using AI in customer service. And we identified some similar risks, uh, many of them. Um, and we are also kind of, so we put that up in our chat, uh, the, our the chat GPT part in our platform. We also put it down right now and uh, do more adjustment and uh, um, and work with some third parties. So for example, this company called Ada, we're working with them uh, to have a more crypto specific updated data version of chat GPT to serve the user. I think they also work with them, some other exchange and then it's a crypto specific company. Uh, and that's some of the things that we are doing. Yeah, I think AI is a really interesting space, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how it develops and how exchanges you know, 
utilise in the future. I think it's uh, something that really is interesting. And by the way, I think this will happen. Not, not just right now because ChatGPT came out a couple of years ago and everyone excited about uh, and the mid-journey, stable diffusion, these are some platforms on the AI drawing, right? And I, I love them, I, I experiment with it a lot as well. Uh, but AI plus Web3 will be a strong and important narrative for not just one year, maybe I would say for 10 years. So that's something we, that's why we invest a lot in this space. Because it's just going to fundamentally change everyone's life. And it's an important thing to move into the future for at least five to ten years. Yeah, okay. we, we talk about that on um, our podcast a lot. You know, time horizon when invested in cryptocurrency is so important. Um, and, and I don't think people talk about it enough. Everyone's uh, looking for the, the short time frames and analysis on you know, where the price is going to be next week. Or, Today. Yeah, what should I buy today yeah. to gain, have a 100 gain, yeah. times gain tomorrow? Yeah. And, and, and that time horizon is so important because you are going to, particularly like early, early adoption, but I think that's the phase we're in at the moment. We haven't got that mainstream adoption yet. You know, the price is going to be volatile and it's going to be very challenging to, to navigate that. I think like short term, long term is, is definitely the, the way to look at the market. Yeah. Like say Web three, artificial intelligence, um, supply chain. Uh, I think it's uh, another really unique and, and interesting uh, sector to, to be looking at. And, and what role does crypto have in all of these different sectors in the future? I think you know, it's, it's definitely the way to, to look at the market. Um, what's on Big Get's roadmap? We obviously touched on utilizing artificial intelligence uh, in the background, but is there anything else that you're working on with Big Get that you think is really interested in uh, the investors? I feel there are so many things happening uh, in, in the top of that. I don't know which one to choose, so I just share a few that come to my mind. Uh, one thing that, uh, that we're doing is to, like I said, implement more strategies around how to attract like professional traders uh, volume and how to gain their trust. Not just gain their trust as if we are a safe platform, we've done quite a bit on that already, but also gain their trust and uh, um, and their, their, their fun, hopefully, uh, that they want to trade more on our platform because we can bring value to them and we can bring some value that other exchanges cannot. So one thing we identified is uh, we, we we also have a very strong research and uh, venture capital firm that the, the VC was established two years ago and they have a pretty good track record already. So uh, we are kind of implementing some of the uh, the things that we learn internally. Like for example, how to avoid the pitfalls of uh, buying a main point. This sort of thing that retail users and the institutional VIP users really care about. So we're going to have a VIP specific talk. Um, I think next week only invite invitation only like only for fifty VIPs um, on this topic. So these are kind of the activities we are doing in our platform so that we wanna you know be a professional and your trust worthy. Uh, advisor and a one-stop financial and crypto purchase platform. So that's one thing we are working on. And then maybe branding-wise, we will have some great branding coming up this Q3, and that's largely under my supervision too. Uh, we are going to have our first ever Big Get Summit within five years. Of course, to celebrate our five-year anniversary, but also to have this platform to showcase our ecosystem and uh, that's the first time we're doing a summit. We, we sponsor lots of summits and we work with lots of third party event organizers but this is the first time that we get is for a, a summit and I'm very proud of it. Uh, hopefully it can be a very interesting event happening in September in Singapore. So that's uh, together with our great branding we're going to announce another interesting uh, well, the way, the way I see interesting is because it's not like uh, what we did previously uh, in terms of sponsorship with uh, sports and e-gaming. Right now, this is a whole new sector 
of uh, individual like it's a, it's a superstar in in, in, uh, uh, in a special different category basically that we are going to announce is also uh, one of our new partners. Yes. Um, in Q3, yeah, so that's a uh, branding. And then I guess it's all on like smaller little areas where we want to continue to improve our platform in terms of giving users a better user experience, a better UI, UX. Uh, we are expanding on some locations geographically. Uh, for example, we set up a new office in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, uh, and we are recruiting more people to our Dubai office, etc. Um, and then we increase the uh, volume and partners on via channel. So these are all the like different department, different sectors. We are all improving gradually. And we do, I have mentioned that during uh, the panel as well, we do view this as a marathon so that you know, people uh, are, are looking into the future in the longer time horizon. Even if this is a bear market, we don't just stop building. It's, it is very hard. And then I know some of the other firms, they were just like, you know, going vacation. Like, I don't care anymore. Anyway, there is no trading volume. But we are not like that. Even if this is a bear market and it's, uh, uh, the liquidity, everything is slightly harder. Um, but we are building rigorously. And we think it's a golden window for growth. Fantastic. And um, is there anything that you would like to, that we haven't already covered, to, to share with, with the community you know, about BitGet that um, you think the, the community would be interested in? Um, I think community might be interested in where, how BitGet provides more valuable assets, uniquely valuable assets, exclusive of BitGet. And why should I you know, start? For example, training on Bigget or looking into uh, this company. Um, so there are a few things that we, we we really care a lot in terms of listing the token, in terms of uh, token management, and uh, finding the initiated and airdrop of uh, uh, arbitrum token. Uh, so things like that is what we care a lot. And then there are like cases. For example, this this. I still, when I, like there's one day, I look at my phone, there were like 100 tweets bumping up and they were all like fuzz about Big Get. And I, I asked my team, what happened? Like, I was in a meeting, right? So they, they, they later turn, t t um, told me that this is actually an Indian influencer who has their token list in our platform, but we froze their account because they were doing content dump. So they drive up the price and they then they, they, they quick sell it. And uh, uh, and that's that's the kind of action we take towards the bad players in, in token listing. And we care a lot about what are the good players in the firm, uh, in the in the ecosystem and we wanna work with them and we, we kinda of punish the bad players as well. So this is a uh, a good example of Know, how we care about our community, about our users, and for those users who bought that token, we actually accommodate all of them in terms of their losses. Because we understand it's not their fault, it's the fault of this this, uh, this team that uh, that had their token listed and, and they were pumping and dumping, right? So that's, that's, that's some of the things that I think maybe might be valuable in terms of what your yeah, I think um, one thing that I thought was was amazing was the fund you did a fund uh, when FTX class. Yeah, we call it Big Get Protection Fund. Uh, we established that long long before FTX class, actually last year, earlier last year, uh, and that was two hundred million valuation in this open wallet, not just one open wallet, but a few different wallet addresses where people can go to the website and check for themselves and see that the fund are there because it is all on-chain data. Uh, and then after FTX class, we increased the fund value to, uh, to 300 million. And we pledge to keep it above 300 million, at least for three years. So uh, 
it's still ongoing and uh, I think right now given Bitcoin price it's probably valued at 300 and maybe 40 million etc um, but the, the key thing is this fund is to protect our users uh, from any hacking any sort of uh, stable uh, instability in system or technology and any kind of loss that is uh, uh, happening not due to users' behavior, but to you know external raises, um, and I mentioned this project that did pump and dump. We also accommodate the users from the money from this protection fund. So this kind of protection scheme is very important and dear to our heart at Beget, and we think we really value our user a lot and care for the community too. Perfect. Thank you, Jay. It was a really good summary of uh, BitGet and I appreciate you taking the time out of the busy schedule today. Uh, I, I imagine that the community are going to be uh, over the moon with the, the interview. Um, yeah, so thanks for that. Thank you. Thanks for having me.